a year ago, I had just quit my job as a manager at an ice cream place. And then in six months, I'm going to be opening my own ice cream brand, like my own store, which is absolutely mind blowing how fast all of this can work. And that's just a big thanks to everyone that supported me on all the platforms. Like, it's just crazy to think that this is even a possibility. That's the voice of Dylan LeMay. You might know him as that talented ice cream guy with more than 11 million followers on TikTok. But did you know he's from right here in Metro Detroit and about to take a big step forward with his own ice cream shop? I'm Jer Stays, and on Your Daily Detroit, we're catching Dylan's story and maybe some delicious tips and treats along the way. This is episode 901 of the show for Monday, January 10th, 2022. Dylan LeMay, welcome to Daily Detroit. Hello. Thank you, Jer. Of course. Now, if you've been on TikTok, or as some of my older friends say, the TikTok, because, you know, here in Michigan, it's the something, or I'm surprised <laughs> it's not TikToks like Myers or Fords. It probably happens if we're being honest. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I guess I'll start at the very beginning. Uh, you're obviously local. You're from our region. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you get into TikTok? Because uh, it, it's something where it you, you see somebody do something and you go through it. It's like you have the knack for it. So how did you get into it? How do you find it? It's kind of funny. If I think back, it started off as I've heard a lot of people talking about it. And in my head, I wrote it off as just this goofy app that teenage girls use to dance on. And I'm like, why would I ever want to be on there? But then as more and more people kind of crush that idea in my head of it, I just was like, whatever, I'm bored. I'll download the app. And then I got hooked because I was like, how are these videos going viral? Why are millions of people seeing this one goofy video? Why does it work like that? And I just began digging in, just watching it. And one day I watched like 14 hours was my screen time <laughs> on the app, which is insane. But then I got a good grasp of the, the app. And then that made me want to start creating on it. You know, when I first saw all the, the reels, the first thing I got was all of those shuffle videos. And I'm like, I guess to be big on this platform, I've got to learn how to shuffle. <laughs> See, yeah, it kind of all started with dancing, which is so random because I definitely have never danced on there. <laughs> really? Are you going to try it sometime? Um, No, probably not. I mean, that would be a great collab. <laughs> Somebody, right? Some shuffler's got to be out there watching you. <laughs> well, I, I did film one, but it never got posted. I said I would never do it, but I recently met Paul Abdul. And if you know anything about Paula Abdul, she's an amazing dancer. And so she convinced me to do one, but we never posted it. So I have oh. made one. It's just not on, online anywhere. See, Paula Abdul is like the bridge, I mean, between our two ages, because mm -hmm. of course I know who Paula Abdul is. She's yes. she's amazing. Um, and that was a really cool little little series that you did. I want to talk about that loop for a second because yes. it's like butter. It's almost hypnotic <laughs> where you don't realize you're watching the same video how much effort does that take? And when did, you, when did you find that like that was the sauce? It kind of came back to me um, when I was a kid and I watched Vine a little bit. There was a creator named Zach King and he's like almost like a magician with his loops and just the way that he's very creative with his videos. And when I got on TikTok, I saw somebody do a loop, but it wasn't quite what I wanted. Like the loop left me wanting more like it was good, but it wasn't what I wanted. And it brought me back to my memories of Zach King on Vine. And so then I started trying to make loops. And at the beginning, they were okay. But then I began to just refine it. And it became my favorite part about creating. Every day, it was like when I go to make a video, I had to think through that loop. And it was such a fun, creative challenge to make it so that, like you said, it was nice and buttery and would trick you and hypnotic. Like that was my goal. Now it's easy because I have all these methods that I've built out. But at the beginning, it was a very big challenge. There were days where I'd literally sit and talk out loud to try to think through how I could craft this to be confusing for everyone. <laughs> you know, one of the things I've learned over the years is that constraints breed creativity. Mm -hmm, definitely. So I got to get into a little bit of the local topics now. So people know you're from Wayne County, right? You're from this part of town or you live there now. Yeah. So, I mean, you talked about how I started with content, but if we really want to talk about how I got started with content, it's really like pulling it all the way back to when I was 15. When I was 15, I started working at a Cold Stone in Taylor, actually. And I worked there for about a year. And then I actually switched over to one in Allen Park. And I worked there until I went to college. But that's really where it started because all of my content kind of has been based off of my job with ice cream. And so thankfully, as I grew up locally here, I was able to be connected with all those ice cream shops. And so once I moved back, I kind of reconnected with my old ice cream shops that I worked at when I was in high school. 
But then I also created this whole new network of all these different local ice cream places that I get to go to and make videos. How fun is it to support other local businesses? Oh, it's my favorite thing. I mean, it's it's great. Like I worked for, with a bunch of franchises for years and there's like a a good feeling from helping out franchises, but there's just something very special about helping out like a family that just put so much effort and years and hard work into something and they don't have a huge marketing budget. Most of them don't even have one at all. So you just go in and help them in any way that you can. Um, and it's crazy to think of how much of an impact you can have on these people. And it's just such a fun relationship to cultivate and it helps everyone. It gives me content. It gives my viewers something enjoyable. It gives them some publicity. And then it just unites the whole community together in such a fun way because we're all passionate about where we're from. We all love being from here. Well, and people forget most of the jobs in, in any area, are they're, they're from small businesses. They're from mm -hmm. local places, you know, grinding it out and making it work. Definitely. Yeah, it's great. It's one of my favorite things. I'm so thankful for it. Now, I'm kind of an adventurous guy when it comes to food. And so when I go out to a new ice cream place, because I always encourage us on the podcast, go somewhere you've never tried before, you know, stretch your mm -hmm. legs. What is your biggest advice for someone ordering ice cream? Like if you're going into a new place, you're going somewhere like what is your advice for like feeling a place out and trying it? Like what would what would you do first? Yeah, I think it depends on the person because um, working with ice cream for years, I've understand that there's usually like that person that they like very basic things. So it's always OK. Don't feel pressured. If you like vanilla, just get vanilla. It's OK. Where no one's going to be upset with you because you don't get something crazy. But like you said, if, if you're an adventurer like you, Jer, the best thing to do is I think just really look through their menu, especially nowadays. Ice cream places are trying to be very original and they're trying to be creative and think of fun new things to do. Um, so most places nowadays have a couple of signature things that are fun and different. And if you can't figure that out from the menu, just ask. I mean, most places are always trying to help the best that they can. So like one of the places I go to locally here, uh, they have a lot of fun things like they like heat up a, a donut and they'll fill it with ice cream or they heat up Eggo waffles and fill them with ice cream. And never in my life would I thought I'd eat something like that. But once I tried like it inside of an Eggo waffle, it is so good. Like I 100% recommend if you've never ate ice cream with an Eggo waffle before, just even do it at home. Like it's it's so good. I'm literally going to go downstairs and do that after this interview. Like Seriously, that's going to be should. my lunch. It, honestly, it is that good. Like you will you'll never go back. Like toast it up nice and good, put some ice cream on it. So good. And that's the thing. Like if you don't like something, you can always try something else. Of right. Course. This isn't like a big long term commitment. I also find it's good to experiment so that you know what you like. So you kind of yeah. know where your boundaries are so that you can, you know, be open to trying different things. Definitely. And you can always ease into it, too. I mean, say, like I just said, the waffle thing the waffle might be out of your comfort zone. So then just pick a flavor that you're used to. And so it's like a little bit of both. You're like taking baby steps, you know, just have fun with it. No one's forcing you to be too crazy. Like just go with whatever is comfortable for you. Okay. So since you're around here, I've got to ask, what is your favorite food around town? That's not ice cream. Oh, that's, that's so tough. I mean, now that I've kind of traveled some, I realize like how signature pizza is in different places. Like I know I've always heard of oh Chicago pizza and New York pizza and whatever, but honestly, I just love getting some good Detroit style pizza and Jets is probably like one of my favorites to get it because you just can't get it anywhere else. Like you can go get any other style of pizza pretty much everywhere else, but Detroit style pizza, you can only really get it here and it's so good. And when I travel, very few places get it right because they don't understand oh, the, yeah. the crisp to like spongy yes. ratio, right? Yes. There, there's yeah, something no about that. Right. Yeah. You got to have the contrast of crunch and soft. I feel like that's got to be the same way too with, with ice cream as well. I've seen some of your creations. There's, mm -hmm. there's different layers and textures to it. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's one of the things that's really fun to play with ice cream is to really challenge how you add different types of textures and consistencies and toppings and layering on the flavors, which is always a learning thing for me and for the customer. Cause you never know, like I never would have thought of putting pretzels in my ice cream, but then one time that was a thing. And now that's one of my favorite toppings to put in ice cream is pretzels. Oh, that salt sweet combination is great. Oh, it is you know, so good. One of my favorite cookies is the Avalon uh, chocolate sea salt. Mm, which kind of puts really the good. two together. And that's that's a really nice combination. So the reason we're here, the news peg is there's a shop coming. You're going to be doing this thing in New York. I mean, how did like TikTok to shop that? That's a move, man. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. I mean, if we think a year ago, I had just quit my job as a manager at an ice cream place. 
And then in six months, I'm going to be opening my own ice cream brand, like my own store, which is absolutely mind blowing how fast all of this can work. And that's just a big thanks to everyone that supported me on all the platforms. Like, it's just crazy to think that this is even a possibility. So what's the name? The name it's Ketchin ice cream. And if you've never watched my videos, it's probably sounds really confusing. But one thing that I've done a ton since making content is learning how to be really good at throwing ice cream. And so your part of the role would be you get to catch the ice cream. So catch an ice cream. And it's kind of fun. It's it's a play on words, you know, because then catch an ice cream, it's a sentence. So I just we got goofy with it. We wanted to pick something that was fun and different and challenge your thoughts while you thought through it. But it also makes sense for what I do. Well, and you're not open yet, correct? That's still coming together. Yep. It should be open in the summer. All right, cool. So what have you learned in this journey that's different than working for somebody else? The biggest thing that I learned so far is just ask for help when you need it, especially right now. It's like all these people are working with me and everybody's trying to help me accomplish my goals. And I'm doing a lot of things that I've never done before. I've never had a look through contracts and leases and all these different things. But there's so many people around me that love me and they're trying so hard to help me uh, accomplish my dreams. And so I just need to ask for help when I need to. So how did New York come together? I mean, the Big Apple, that's, I mean, the song says, <laughs> if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Yeah. I, as I thought through things, I totally could do something locally here and it would be great and I would love it. But when I looked at my largest amount of following, it was in the Northeast. It was in the New York area. I was like, if I do this, I really want to just try to go all out. I want to try to push it to the most because then I know that I can I can do everything else because this is going to be a, my biggest challenge, which would be so fun. As I went through, I looked at different places. New York is in the same time zone as home. So that's comforting for me because then I can visit family and talk on the phone. And everything It's not going to be a bother. But then also it's close on a flight. So I was like, OK, that's cool. That makes me feel comfortable because then I'll be close to home. But then when it came to my followers, this is where the largest portion of them are. Also, this is where they can have the quickest access to me. So it's a huge population, but public transportation in New York is so streamlined. There's so many systems that mm -hmm. make it easy for people to get there quickly. And there's also a huge amount of tourism, not just in the United States, but also international. So I have a lot of international fans as well. Like one day I was walking through Times Square and this kid came up to me and was like, hey, can I take a picture with you? And it was super cool. And I was like, hey, where are you from? Expecting him to say a state. And he told me he was from Sweden. And I, I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> and wow. He was like, yeah, I'm from Sweden. We're just on vacation. I was like, this is crazy. What, what in the world? Who would have thought? So just moments like that are what I'm most excited for. I figured New York City is going to give me the opportunity to connect with as many people as possible. That's one of the things I think a lot of people who grew up around here, they don't realize those things like the transportation and the tourism. Like, mm -hmm. It's so crucial to connecting businesses together and, and doing different things. Yeah, for sure. And I love this area. And I think at some point I'll definitely do something here. But for this one, I was like, I have to think through what is best for my audience. And New York City seemed like the best option for the, that sake of connecting with as many people as I possibly can. Well, and it's a business decision, right? You've yeah. got to bring people together. That does answer a question I was going to ask. I was going to be like, so you're saying we got a chance. You're saying the door's open. We could maybe get one one day. Yeah, I, I could totally imagine it happening. But in the meantime, I have so many like amazing relationships with ice cream places here too that I do stuff with all the time. So at the very least, you'll see me in local places here. I do events with them. I give away free ice cream sometimes or just come work with them and do little meet and greets and different fun stuff. So there's always something locally that I'm doing. So where in New York is this going to be? Yeah, so it's going to be in a part of New York called NoHo. So it's like lower Manhattan. If you look it up on a map, you'll see like Soho. It's right above that. So it's north of Houston is the area. So it's north of a street called Houston. It's in a very fun, like bustling, very like young, fun energy area. Everyone that I talk to that lives in New York, they're so excited because they're like, you got the perfect spot. It's going to be amazing. They're so stoked. And I feel like that could be a good template for, you know, some of the up and coming and bustling areas here in Metro Detroit one day, you know, I'm crossing my fingers mm -hmm. over here. I'm a homer. Oh, I apologize. Sure. I have to be a homer. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm so excited. That's one thing that was fun is I moved away for college and every time I'd come home and I'd bring friends with me, I'm like, I have to show you Detroit. And I would just be jaw dropped every time I come because even Taylor, I mean, every time I come back, everything is improving so much. Everything is just, we're getting tons of new business and tons of new like 
things are just building up. It's so exciting to see. It makes me so thankful and so proud to be from here. You know, it's a little gem that's really starting to like do some things. Uh, you know, you got that downtown Allen Park right there. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. with like the city coffee shop and things like that. There's all kinds of things. You just got to keep an eye out and look for them. So Dylan, obviously there's going to be a lot of people who already follow you, but if people are listening to this, learning about you for the first time, where can they go? I'm on most platforms, but TikTok is uh, Dylan LeMay. YouTube is Dylan LeMay. Uh, Instagram is DJ LeMay2. And it's also DJ LeMay2 on Snapchat. So you can find me on pretty much everything that you like to, to go on. Well, Dylan, I appreciate you making time for me. And uh, I promise you, I'm going to find a way to say hello in New York later this year. Amazing. I can't wait to see you. And make sure that you try that ice cream with some waffles for lunch. I'm on it. Before I let you go, thanks to Mitre Nate for a very kind review on Apple Podcasts. Glad to have you aboard. He says it's a great local pod and wrote, quote, I tuned in for a DCFC segment, and once it ended, I just let a bunch of older episodes play. They cover so many topics. It's informative, entertaining, and short enough to listen to every day. I'm glad I found you guys. Well, thank you, Meet Trey Nate. Also, thanks to our members at patreon.com slash daily Detroit for supporting our podcast and newsletter. With that, I'm Jer Stays. Take care of each other, and I'll see you around Detroit. <laughs>